Hello, and welcome to Field Notes. Today is the day that we start a new mini-series all about earthquakes. There are just too many interesting things to fit into one video. So instead, we'll be looking at it in much more manageable chunks. We will be looking at what causes them, how we measure them, what happens during an earthquake, and maybe a hark back to the old days of geomythology videos. Now, however, it is time to get ourselves more comfortable with basic earthquake knowledge. To do that, we have to have a decent handling on what the terms mean. This way, we can have a discussion about them much more easily. It's going to be fascinating. Let's start with a term that is probably familiar to most of us, the epicenter of an earthquake. Let's say you're looking down on the earth from bird's eye view. This is also called map view. It's what the map is. It's map view. The epicenter is the point on the map where the earthquake occurred. However, if you were to look at the ground in 3D space, the epicenter would just be a point on the surface. Earthquakes don't typically happen on the surface, they happen underground. The point in a 3D view of the earth where the earthquake actually happened is called the focus. When an earthquake occurs, the characteristic shaking is actually caused by seismic waves. These seismic waves radiate out from the focus. So in 3D, we have a focus. In map view, we have an epicenter. And seismic waves are what cause the earthquake. So what exactly is an earthquake? We all know that it is a shaking of the earth and is also sometimes called a tremor or a terror. What causes this shaking is the movement of rock against one another. Two rigid pieces of rock trying to move up against one another does not happen nicely. The rocks fight this movement which causes a buildup of pressure. Eventually the pressure gets to a breaking point at which time the rocks give way and slip. That slip is what releases the seismic energy and results in the shaking. Now that we know specifically what an earthquake is, where do they occur? Because earthquakes are caused by moving rock, plate boundaries are ripe with earthquake opportunities. Lithospheric plates cover the earth much like a shell. Plate boundaries are locations where several different pieces of this rock meet and are interacting. These interactions are what cause most of the earthquakes in the world. Now I know what you're thinking, but I live in XYZ town and we are in the middle of a continent, not next to a plate boundary, and we had an earthquake last Week. And that's because you can get earthquakes wherever there are faults, and there happen to be faults all over the continent. In fact, one of the most famous areas for interplate earthquake activity is the New Madrid zone in my home state of Illinois. So while interplate earthquakes are more rare, they definitely do happen. The USGS records about 50 earthquakes a day. But Jessica, I don't feel and or hear about earthquakes every day. That's because most are too small to be perceptible by humans. Wonder what that cutoff is? Stay tuned for later in the series where we will discuss how we measure earthquakes, types of seismic activity, effects of earthquakes, and the geomythology of this phenomenon. If you like this video and are excited for the rest of this series, give it a thumbs up, leave some earthquake questions, down below or if you think there is another topic that requires a mini series subscribe if you would like to see more and i will see you all next time turn that off beautiful dusty ass screen mm. Mm. i square water all over myself